I'm Nate Story from Bright Agritech and this morning we're going to talk a little bit about our wood burning boiler system. So most greenhouses are heated on natural gas and when we built this one out here uh, we didn't have a gas line nor did we have the money to put a gas line in. So we started looking at a few other options. Um, one of the things that we came across immediately was wood because on a per BTU basis, wood is one of the cheapest forms of heat available. Another thing that influenced our decision was the fact that our mountains up here are just covered in beetle killed wood. So uh, all that wood is being logged and being hauled out, um, otherwise it's going to cause forest fires. So we have a vast supply of nice dry cured wood for us to burn. When we first started uh, thinking about a boiler system, we started looking at all our different options. There's a lot of different companies out there that make these things, and there's a whole bunch of ways that uh, you can make them yourself if you really feel like um, welding one up. What we ended up settling on was a store-bought option uh, from Central Boiler. One of the reasons we settled on this particular boiler was when we did our heat calculations for our greenhouse, we realized when it's 30 below here with the wind whipping out here, um, we got to supply about a quarter of a million BTU an hour to keep our greenhouse heated where we want it. So that was our starting point. We started looking around for boilers that would supply a quarter of a million BTU an hour. This particular model from Central Boiler does just that on an eight hour burn. So that was the primary reason we went with this boiler over um, a smaller one or a larger one. Uh, of course, as you go larger, it costs more. As you go smaller, it costs less. But you want to pick a boiler that's just right for your heating needs. So boiler is a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, one of the nice things about these is that they're really uh, giant water jacketed furnaces and they heat your water up um, pretty hot, usually to about 185 to 195 degrees. But they don't actually boil it, which is a real nice thing because high pressure uh, steam is a major pain in the butt. If you can go to something that's just really low pressure, runs off of a pump, and is just moving hot water around, a hydronic system, that's ideal. Another nice thing about these systems is, is they're really easy to install. It'll take you a, a day or two, depending on how much plumbing you've done in your life. But essentially, uh, you can we put all this in, we wired it all up, we put in all of the um, plumbing, uh, the valves, all the pumps, everything ourselves. Not a problem. So um, as far as getting these things in, uh, just in average person with fairly average plumbing skills can do it. So what we have here is basically um, a firebox and uh, you can see some of our coals from last night still in there and uh, it's a fairly large firebox on this particular model. Uh, we can fit quite a lot of wood in there so we basically uh, stoke it up and, and when we have really high heat demand I've got to come back here every single night and stoke it late but um, again not a problem. The wood is cheap enough that it, it's not a big deal for us. So we have a pretty large firebox in there. It's surrounded by a water jacket. And uh, this thing is just full of water basically around this firebox. So we, as we heat it up, um, the wood heats up that water and a pump moves that water out to all of our heat exchangers um, in our greenhouses and through tubing coils that we've got in our fish tanks inside. Now, um, the way this thing works is it's regulated on a thermostat we basically uh, have a damper right here that opens and closes. And um, as soon as the thermostat hits a certain temperature, for us, we've got it set at 185 degrees. As soon as it hits 185, that damper just slams shut and it smothers the fire. So, you know, it basically will stop burning as soon as it hits 185. It continues to circulate water round the clock all the time. So as that water runs through heat exchangers and cools off, gets dumped back into this uh, water jacket here. Um, the water slowly cools, slowly cools, slowly cools. When it hits 175, bam, that damper shoots open again and the fire starts up. So basically with this particular fire, we started this in, I think, October of last year and it's run constantly ever since. So this is uh, the pump here that runs our entire system. And you see we've got room for another pump over here. Um, there's, there's spots for more hookups. And uh, essentially as we expand, what we can do is we can add another pump over here um, to essentially, uh, you know, run a whole separate greenhouse. And we can run several of them. If you look at the little diagram over here, you see we can run a total of three pumps on this system. So it's, uh, it's kind of a nice deal. As we grow, we can kind of scale our uh, furnace to our needs. 
and um, just install more pumps, install more uh, heat exchangers, and, and go from there. Now the one thing is, is this is rated just for a single greenhouse. So as we expand, we're going to have to figure out a way to get more BTUs out of this furnace um, to heat all of our greenhouses. So for those of you that grew up split in wood and have some really horrible childhood memories, um, the nice thing about these furnaces is that they burn rounds. So you don't got to split wood uh, to burn it in, in these things, which is really nice. They'll take rounds up to about three and a half feet long. So you can see here we've got some, some pretty long rounds and uh, these will all burn just fine and they'll also you know one thing we found too with this pine is that it doesn't always need to be cured up perfectly so we get a mix of of dry and green stuff when we order it in and the green stuff burns just fine a little slower but just fine so um, it's kind of a nice labor low intensity thing to uh, you know basically cut this wood and get it stoked now we order it in by the truckload so we'll walk over to our log pile right now and I'll show you what that looks like. So we, uh, to make things simple, we ordered in by the truckload. Now we started just hauling it in ourselves, but um, we'll have gone through pretty darn close to about 40 cords this winter um, to keep our greenhouse heated. So when you're talking quantities like 40 cords, hauling it all in yourself becomes a bit time intensive. And what we found is it just wasn't worth it. So now we order it by the truckload. So we have an actual logging truck come down and dump logs for us down here and we get usually between 16 and 18 cord per load and this is what uh, 16 to 18 cords of you know, 30 to 40 foot logs looks like. So we're able to get loads like this uh, for, for pretty cheap. We get it for about 1100 bucks a load and on a per BTU basis that's really inexpensive. And uh, it's nice because we can market our greenhouse as essentially running on renewable energy sources because uh, these trees regrow and right now we happen to have a, a major uh, pine beetle epidemic in the mountains of, around this area in the Rocky Mountains and um, it's causing an increase in, in forest fire intensity combined with a lot of boneheaded moves uh, suppressing fires over the last uh, you know 50 60 years so by getting up there and by logging out some of this stuff it reduces fire intensity and it's uh, generally just kind of a nice thing to do these trees can either fall over in the woods and rot in the woods or we can haul them down and use them productively to uh, grow some good organic vegetables here in town for local consumers so uh, we we go the the latter route and for us it's been a great way to heat our greenhouse and basically reduce our cost of operations so hopefully that answers most of your questions about our wood-fired uh, boiler system. If you got more questions, check out our greenhouse video where we talk about heat exchangers inside. And if you have uh, specific questions, feel free to ask. Uh, also check out the Central Boiler website. They've got lots of specs and lots of um, information on these particular types of boilers. So hopefully that was helpful to you folks. If you found it useful, please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Also check out our vertical food blog where we talk more about vertical farming, building greenhouses, soil farming, uh, all of the stuff that we do out here at the farm. On this series, we'll just kind of go through the build with you so you can see what it takes. So we'll do this as the uh, first part of a multi-part series on this uh, other greenhouse build we're putting up.